Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to talk about the question of why would your roses change colors and I most often hear this from people who bought a rose in the last couple of years, placed it in their garden and suddenly it moved dramatically from one color over to a brand new color of rose. And so I want to divide this out into a couple of different ways that that color change can happen. But first one I'm going to say is that I've heard the explanation that it's cross-pollination, that the bees move the pollen from one plant to another and that that changed the color of the rose. That is categorically not true and I'll explain why at the back end of this video. But other than that, there are a few different ways that your roses can change colors. And behind me is an example of a rose that opens with bright orange buds and then opens out to lighter yellow colored flowers. Don't underestimate the kind of change that it can make to have a difference in temperature or a difference in moisture can actually make a big difference to how the initial roses uh, present in your in your garden and this is a more subtle kind of color change uh, this isn't the dramatic you know changing from white to red or changing from pink to yellow uh, kind of color change I'm talking about this would be more in the range of going from a deeper apricot or orange to a lighter yellow or going from a deep pink to a more washed out pink or almost white. That kind of color change is definitely within the range of what uh, is natural for a rose to vary in the garden. Let's talk about some of the more dramatic color changes. Directly behind me here is Berangera de Laine, which is a hybrid perpetual rose with these deep pink, almost red flowers with a very distinctive white edge on the petal. Now let's say you bought a rose like this and then suddenly you saw that there was a brand new shoot coming right from the base of the plant that came up. It looked kind of funny, different color foliage, maybe different leaf count, and suddenly it bloomed with a cluster flowering white bloom with very few petals. Well, that one is very easy to understand what the problem is. You're, you've had a rose that has been grafted and the root stalk has expressed its genetics. Now, there's nothing unusual about this. This has been a very common production system in the 20th century, 21st century, is that uh, roses are grown in a big field on a grafted rootstock. The rootstock is supposed to give the plant uh, additional vigor and make the production of the plant easier, but it's genetically different than the top stock or the scion stock of the plant. So the scion is supposed to look like this. The rootstock sends up its own genetic uh, uh, shoots and now it blooms in a completely different color. On a climber, you may go from having a gorgeous white or pink climber, then all of a sudden you see these dark red roses coming out of it. That's Dr. Huey rootstock. Uh, many of the rootstocks that I've seen up here in Canada might be a multiflora rootstock with those little white flowers or canina rootstock. All of these are just different looking plants that have different characteristics of their roots and if they ever send a shoot uh, that then it's going to have different looking flowers. Uh, your answer to that is very easy. You go and find that shoot, you follow it right down to the bottom of the plant and you cut it as deep as you can even down below the surface of the soil if you can and then you watch for additional suckers that are, are that are that are planning to come up one more way that your rose can change colors and I want to talk about this one because it's actually probably the most fascinating of them is a spontaneous mut genetic mutation of a portion or a stem of the plant um, and this rose here uh, it's it's yellow right now this is the version we know of it but if all of a sudden a, you had a just a slight genetic variation that made these yellow flowers come off entirely white just pure white that would be called a sport it would happen in one stem one branch of the plant and you'd look and you say well, okay these flowers are identical they're blooming at exactly the same time but one of them is yellow and one of them is white they have identical scent what's going on if you took a cutting from that uh, from that stem that was white and then planted it elsewhere in the garden and it stayed true to that color that would be called a stable sport of the initial variety an example of this that happens a lot in the garden is iceberg iceberg is a, a shrub rose well-known white shrub rose uh, floribunda and it actually has sported into climbing iceberg brilliant pink iceberg burgundy iceberg it just has a lot of genetic variation 
variation within its DNA that it can express on one shoot or another. And then people have found those variations and they've capitalized on them by propagating from them and making a new variety. One example of this, a long-standing example of this, is Rosa Gallica officinalis, the apothecary rose. It's a historical rose from, you know, I think as long as the history books have been around. It's sported somewhere, I think, in the 1200, 1300 range. It's sported over to Rosa Mundi, which has stripes on it. Now, that Rosa Mundi you can still find in gardens, but it's very uncommon to find a variety, or sorry, a specimen of Rosa Mundi that isn't continuously reverting back to Rosa Gallica officinalis. So you will find the striped flowers on the plant, but you'll also find some stems that usually have the straight pink variety. That's just genetic variation moving back and forth on the same plant. Okay, let's talk about why this is not an issue of cross-pollination, and I think this comes from a, just a dramatic misunderstanding of uh, plant biology. Uh, once this flower, when this flower is forming, it's closed, it's genetically like its mother plant. It doesn't take any pollen from anybody until much, much later. Once it's opened, uh, and then its, uh, its uh, pistils will become uh, receptive to accepting pollen from other plants, by that time, the flower is already formed. There's no opportunity there for the genetics from another plant, from the pollen of another plant, to get in there and change the form of the flower. So that one is just an old wives' tale. I've heard it a few times, and people trying to explain why they've had color changes in their roses. No, there's no way you can transfer the pollen from another plant and change the genetics of an existing flower or even of the mother plant. It just can't happen. All right, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this discussion of why your roses may change colors. And if you have any comments or questions, please drop those down in the comments of the video.